Welcome to part two of LRGB pre-combine video. Um, now that we have our luminance and RGB put back together, we're going to work on one image at a time. And the first one uh, we're going to work is on RGB. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, processing this. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. If you're watching this and you're a beginner, then you would want to go to part four, part 11 of my absolute beginners. But we're just going to get these ready for part three after this video, which will be um, putting LRGB together. Okay, so let's get started on this. We want to neutralize the background, just like we would a normal image that doesn't have any LRGB. So, two ways. Let's start with the standard way that everybody knows. We're going to make a zoom in, make a preview somewhere there's no stars or less stars as possible right here. Zoom back out. Choose that preview. One, drag and drop. And undo, redo. Okay. Let's leave the preview there. Now we'll open color calibration. And now I'm going to do it two ways. One, we're just going to choose the entire galaxy. So this will be preview number two, right here. Go down and re-choose your background reference, number one, preview. And let's drag and drop this and see what happens. Okay. Let's see if there's a before and after. Yep, a bit nice change. Everything is calibrated now. Okay, that's the one way. The second way, I'm gonna have to back up now. Undo color calibration and undo background neutralization. Okay, so undo redo and so we still have a preview for the background, but in order now to, to calibrate the stars and the galaxy, um, we're gonna do something that I normally don't do, or at least I haven't made a video on it. And it's uh, aggregation of all our previews. So this is the background. So let's make some previews of the stars. Choose as many as you want include colored stars, the white or the yellow ones. There we go. Down here. One more. Okay. Go to script. Now it's been a while here since I've done this. I believe it might be utilities. Preview aggregator. Okay. Uncheck preview one because it is the background. We just want the stars. So that they're all there. And now we're going to create a preview using all these all these combined into one. So okay, okay. And now we have all these stars are now become part of our aggregated preview. Let's go to this. I don't think we need this. I think we just keep this. Okay. So minimize the aggregate. And now let's go back to color calibration. And now our reference is all these stars. And we'll use aggregated or all of these combinations. And this is our normal background, preview number one, because this is right here, one, okay. And hit the square or drop the triangle on here. That is another way to do it undo, redo. Now the galaxy still has a yellow core. The background is calibrated. All right, so let's close this. Preview, delete all previews. Okay, that's two. I'm gonna undo it again. Undo color calibration. Remove all the previews. And now we're gonna use photometrics. So I'm going to close this one here. So for this galaxy, most of you people know this, it's M81 
nine hours and 55 minutes plus 69 degrees. Um, the telescope was a 912 William Optics, 132 FLT, Hypercam 2.4 microns. All right, and I chose Canada. If you want, you can choose Cambridge, United States. So let's see now if this galaxy can be, again, color calibrated, drag and drop. And I'm gonna pause for a few seconds. This can take up a couple minutes. So I'm just gonna, I'll be right back. So here's what we end up with. So move that over, bring it back, undo, redo, undo, redo. Excellent. Okay, close photometrics. Okay, and for this, for this case, we're gonna stay with photometrics. You could have stayed with background and color calib or background and aggregate, whichever one you want. I showed you three ways. Let's stay with, let's stick with this. Okay, now, of course, the next step we're gonna to have to do is maybe remove some of the green, um, which is uh, SCNR. Just there's a lot of green in here, especially a lot on this side. So let's do that. It's a simple thing as dragging and dropping it on there. Now, if we zoom in, there's still some green left, but very little, and close that. Okay, that's good. Now let's continue. After we remove some of the green, I usually, normally I want to remove the, um, some of the, a little bit of, um, I guess gradient kind of green inside, kind of purple a bit on this side. So those who are familiar with dynamic background extraction, they're just, again, what I showed in my other videos. Um, for me, I use, the ma my sample weight's uh, 40, and here I use 900 or 0.9, and I only put eight across, and the size are 30. I've already adjusted them ahead of time, so we could, so we can move along. So, uh, hit the check mark on this case, and let's see what we can remove from the back. So we don't have that gradient going from green to kind of a purple. Okay, let's have a look at the background. Stretch it. Okay, so lots of purple, lots of green. Uh, sorry, no green. Purple and pink and magenta. Okay, let's have a look at the image itself. Let's close this, close that. And that looks really, really nice. Screw down the background, have a look. There, that took out a lot of gradient, excellent. Now we're going to do a little bit of noise reduction, a little bit. And for that, just let me zoom in first. You know what? This background is so smooth. I'm not gonna do uh, any of that actually. I'm gonna leave it just the way it is. We're gonna go right to, remember, why do noise reduction if it's not really, really noisy and grainy? What we'll, we can do a little bit just after that. All right, let's go to what's next. Well, we have to stretch the image because we've done the four, first four or five steps to get this pretty well ready to be stretched. So again, to stretch it, you undo it. I'm going to do it one way, then I'll show you the next. The first, if you have it, is process all background arc synth stretch. Okay? Arc synth stretch. Create your preview. I like to, I like to adjust it. Now let's go to our stretch factor. We're going to go a little bit. Keep an eye on it. about 300 and hit estimate black point and that should bring up all the clip okay all right so let's keep stretching we can get rid of the clipping in a minute you can see here i'm going to exaggerate keep stretching right about there now if i do this i get rid of the clipping if i do this i add a lot of clipping in there i don't add clipping but it's showing the black points where you don't want those to be there so keep sliding back to the left until every single little gr uh, yellow uh, man blue and red pixels disappear so there you go before wasn't stretch after before after close the preview drag your arcs and stretch and there you go not bad at all good stretch that's the one way now I'm going to close this I'm going to undo this. Remember, I'm showing you a couple of ways, okay? I will stretch again manually. I'm gonna make a copy of that, redo my stretch, and then just, sorry, just wanted to see it happen there. Undo, redo. 
Okay. That acted very strange. Why is it stretched more than what I did on Arxen? I do not know. Okay, well, fine, we'll go to the next step and stretch it manually. Arxen stretch usually works. This is just acting strange today. So let's go to RGB. We have our preview. We're going to do the mid levels and pull them up, apply it on the square. Reset, pull it back again. Keep an eye on your histogram at the top here. Hit the square, reset a third time, bring it back up, and now let's just bring the background down a bit. Before, after, before, after. Okay, we can stretch that a little bit more because we'll, be we'll be able to darken the background later on. Okay, drag and drop. Okay, so that was the second way. Actually, if I think of Arxin, what I did earlier, that's exactly what it did. It, it pulled it a little bit, um, it made it a little bit brighter uh, for transformation. Now, now we can deal with a little bit with the background. If you feel that it's really noisy, if yours is noisy, and this one is really smooth, so I don't want to do any, but I'll just show you what I would do. I like um, ACDNR. Yeah, I just have to find it because I never do. So here we go. Okay, P create your, open your live preview. Go down to mask, hit preview for lightness mask. And what you want to do here is whatever you want to protect, you're going to make black. Okay, so that's pretty good. Part of the galaxy's not noisy. Again, here you completely, here you will completely cover the galaxy. Use your eyes. Has to make sense. Again, the stars. The darker you get, the more protection. So it has to be, it has to be soft. Gradient here. Now I, now everything that's white, which is the noise, would really, really be dealt with. But I'm gonna just bring it up a little bit so I can bring my lanes and stop right there. Before. Wait a second. Before, after, before, after. Looks good. Now, uncheck, excuse me, uncheck preview and check lightness mask. In this case, it's already highlighted. Now, by doing this, this number is usually 100%. I bring it down to 65. This is usually 1.5, and the standard deviation is 1. So I don't want the, the background too posterized. Now, if you don't see a difference, well, let's make a small window preview. Let's have a look. Before, salty pepper, after. Very, very smooth. We like that. We like that. We're going to go to our full image, drag the background um, noise reduction. In this case, we didn't create a mask like we normally do to use um, multi-scale linear transform, which you could have, but ACDNR already creates a mask for you, even though you don't see it here in red. And this seems to be a lot better than um, MLT, the multi-scale linear transform. And the reason for that is I find that if you use too much uh, multi-linear transform, multi-scale, you end up again posterizing the background. And this data is so good and it's so clean that there's no sense in, you know, adding to it. Just leave it just the way it is. It's fine. If you would have wanted it to do and not use, then you would have went to um, multi, uh, multi linear sc multi scale linear transform, which is right here. Of course, you would have to set all your settings, which is three, 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 or three, two, and one. But all those, if you, if all those can be set, and you've already watched my video, you'll know what to use to fix the background. But let's move ahead. So that is that's that's done with now. Now let's do a little bit of curves. Just add a little bit of contrast. So let's open up curves. There we go. So open up your. Uh, image preview and let's go to RGB of course and just bring that down a bit and up a little bit just enough before after before after just so we don't have a gray background we want to be a little bit darker but not too black a lot of people darken their backgrounds too much not too bad close that uh, reset this actually if you want, I think you can also work on the luminous channel here. Yes, you can. Let me let me over brighten it on purpose. 
There you go. So use your eyes. Let your eyes be the judge here. That's pretty good. We'll apply that one also. Okay. Close. Okay, so what do we do after this? Um, because we're going to be working on part three, we'll work on the doing some extra HDR and uh, local contrast. You can do a little bit here. I'm just going to undo this. It says it's still linear, but that's that shouldn't be right. Look, okay, there we go. If you find the image is too dark, which I find it is right now, I'm going to reopen this again. And I'm going to just pull a bit more. Right there. Remember, the workflow is the workflow, but the workflow works with your eyes, not automatically. If you're not happy with the image, make some changes. I'm going to darken the background a bit, even more, and bring up a little bit more lanes. Right about there. So the, some of the IFN, which is not much here, but it is on luminance, shows up. Close. Apply. Experiment with this. All right, let's keep going. Now I'm going to do a range mask to add a little bit of, um, to, to bring out the lanes and to s the cores to me is a bit too bright. So open up your range mask. Open your live preview, which we always work with. Start with the lower limit and bring it right around the galaxy. Go to slide. Keep going. Stop. Go to smoothness and increase that. So you're kind of feathering it. So it drops off into space and it's not a sharp, abrupt cutoff. Before, after, before, after. Nothing wrong with that. So square to create. And close this one. Make it the same size. Bring it over. Drag and drop it. Now we should be able to see our galaxy. Let's get rid of aggregate. It's in the way. Range mask. Perfect. Excellent. We don't need the range mask anymore. And control K will hide it. Okay, let's take a section of the galaxy and see if we can do HDR or is it going to hurt it. Open up HDR. Bring it down to 5. Lightness. D-ringing. And let's try it. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Don't get too aggressive with this. Well, that turned out pretty good, but let me go back here and adjust here. Every time I do this, we have to keep a close eye on the stars. And I think M81, especially M81, is really hard to not get those three stars to make um, rings around them. Let's have it again. You see what happens? All the lanes come in beautifully, but we have a black circle here. And for whatever reason, if you want to play with the scales, large and small scales, like before, after, before, after, before. Uh, I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on this because this could take a long time. But you see what happens? See the change just by changing small scale? Undo. So, and you can try large scale. Again, I'm not even going to, I'm just going to put it back where it was. Actually, that's quite a bit, uh, much better. So let's do this and let's apply that. Okay, it does add a little bit, always, HDR always add a little bit of, uh, of a noise. Okay, masks, remove the masks. Remove the, the uh, preview. Okay, that's about as much as I want to go with here, and the color seems... In the background, it seems fine, but the galaxy sees, uh, seems a little bit mm, bland. Hopefully, we can work on that on part three when we combine. So that was RGB. And now, let's um, work on luminance. So luminance, I'm going to undo this again. Just stretch it one more time. On the luminance, again, there's a lot of data here. Look at your background. If it's fairly smooth, like this one is fairly smooth. There's almost a hundred subs here. I am not going to noise reduce this. Comes. I'm just going to destroy the background. So let's let's stretch it right off the bat, and then if needed, we can do a little bit of noise reduction. So again, um, undo. I'm going to go through that process again of arc sin. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it just doesn't behave. Reset. 
preview and let's stretch it goes so far when it starts to get too light hit black point there's your salt you remove that by sliding to the left make sure every cold pixel is gone there you go pull some more 500 600 six eight hundred again estimate okay dirt left pull to the left excellent before after close it drag and drop okay so get a little bit bigger Let's have a look good and always keep an eye on your stars they tend to go crazy too we can close that and what was the other way manually doing the histogram if we could choose loom minutes and have a look it's already stretched you don't want to stretch this anymore all right so close that close the sorry close the preview so now that we've stretched it we can have a look again the background in this case it is a little bit just a little um a little noisy a little bit okay we cannot extract luminance here we can't create a range mask over top here because well, we could I believe we can try it sometimes you, you can make a copy and drag it back on top that creates a mask. see this like that not the best mask though but I have used it before and so I so let's try the other one let's see if we can range mask this one and invert it and work on the background just a little bit so range All this just to get ready to combine. And again, let's slowly come up on our galaxy and feather it or smooth out the edges. Perfect. Square to create. Close the preview. And I'm going to show you something. When we were looking at the range selection preview, this was pitch black in the background. The galaxy was white, but this is, this is too light. This is actually going to protect the background. I don't want that. So let's see if we can darken the background so that all we're working with is a, uh, oh, hold on a second here. Just the galaxy. See how this black, which was gray, has now become black? That's really what we want. Before, too much of the background was, was protected. We just want the galaxy. Close that. This is our mask. No, we're working on the mask here. We're not working on the actual image. Now it's dark. Now we can drag it, minimize, and have a look at just the galaxy. Control K. Now, of course, we want to invert it. So you can use it, go to the menu at the top, and you can do that. Or you can use the keyboard strokes for the eye. By the way, it's just mask invert. And now our galaxy will be protected, but the background is not. Let's work on that. Control K just to hide the red. Let's select a part of the background, which is a little bit noisy very very little again what can we use there's all kinds of them because this is mono i'm going back to acdnr seems to be the favorite on some let's create a, a lifetime preview there it is mask okay i just realized something we created a mask and we put it on there why would we want to double mask it undo the preview and look at your number 65 and 10 move over a bit before you probably won't even see this but i can see a huge difference in smoothing out the background and i can't do any more than that that's going to be even very close to posterizing and i don't want that let's zoom in half the galaxy half the background let's have a look much softer but not too much close acnr mask remove the mask and get rid of the preview what do we have pretty good now step three again we want those those arms to come out so if you want to um, if you want to there's a couple of a couple of a uh, couple of ways to do this some people use um, uh, local histogram transformation which is up here uh, sorry yeah local that's one and the other case the one favorite that everybody uses also is HDR Okay, but again, we don't want to HDR the background. 
we just want to work with the galaxy. So remember the range mask we created? We kind of have to reapply it on there so that we could just work on the galaxy. Okay, how do we know it's there? K, 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 leave it off. Let's try, first let's try local histogram. Let's make a nice preview so we can see what the light lanes are going to like going to be like. Boy, I can't talk today. So I have preview. It just takes a few seconds to uh, execute. It has to create the model. And hopefully, it's probably taking the entire image. Hopefully, it's just going to choose my uh, preview and not the entire image. That's why sometimes it takes so long. Okay, so it just chose my preview. Make it a bit smaller, put it over top. Okay. Now it's okay. Now let's see if these settings, because they've already been applied, let's see if we have a, a before, after, before, after. A lot of the smaller, darker areas are coming in nicely now just by 120 kernel. That's how big a round you want to go on the outside of each pixel. And the mount's 300. Never use 100. Never use a 1000 or 1 1.0. You'll destroy your image. So 0.300. And the contrast, let me show you what happens when you put a lot of contrast. Let's go to 14. It introduces a lot of noise. But man, is that a, that's, wow, just incredible amount of detail. So experiment with this. For the purpose of, see what's happening is it's starting to get a little bit grainy on the edges. You can do, again, more. Let me just go here. Later on, you can do some more noise reduction. This is your image. Do what you want with it. And I might actually leave this like this. It's very, it's coming up very nicely. A little bit of rough on the edges, but we'll work on that later on, on part three. So, notice I didn't use HDR this time. I just used local histogram tr uh, equalization. Let's see what it does to the image. Background is protected. Galaxy is vulnerable. And let me come back in a few minutes. Okay, that was a. That went pretty fast. Okay, so what have we got? Let's have a look. Remember what I was saying? How it, it can get, it can cause more noise to be introduced in the galaxy. Now, I'm going to undo this because I want to show you the both ways, right? It's nice. There's lots and lots of lane structures, just unbelievable. I'm going to undo it. Okay, same in, same principle, same idea, and show you HDR again. Um, let's see if I have it somewhere here. So five D ring. Let's try that. If not, we'll go to lightness. But let's just have a look and see if it improves it or makes it worse. Okay, there's a little change. Hold on a second. Before, after, before, after. A little bit of change. Let's see if we go uh, before. Let's try two lightness. Yeah, a little bit of a change. Undo. Let's see if we can go four. Four, after, before, after. Again, remove lightness, remove de-ringing. Make sure you spend a lot of time. Oh, that's not a good idea. Spend some time on this HDR and change the numbers. I don't want to spend, this is not a processing video. This is pre-combined before we go, before we get to the next stage. Okay, so I'm going to close this. I'm going to go back to my local and remember we had the one I have brought this all the way up to 14 and it went just crazy look great though but very noisy let's do it again before after before after okay so we can you can give it a little bit maybe try three or four not too much keep an eye on your galaxy don't make it that's enough that's pretty good I like it back up a little bit drag and drop Remember, we, we're going to end up putting these two together in part three. And if you follow my videos, once the LRGB is together, completely combined, because this is pre-combined right now, you're going to have to redo this all over again. You're going to have to add, uh, you know, maybe check your background, look at your, if there's any gradients. Even though we remove them here, you're combining two images together, it should be okay, might not be. Use your eyes. Let your eyes be the judge. Don't follow a specific workflow. What I mean by that is, if you follow the workflow and your image is being destroyed, you can say, well, you can't blame it on the workflow. The image did not need it. So go by what is needed. I'll be right back.
Okay. So it looks like we're back. And what do we got? Let's put this in perspective. Okay, is there before and after? This time you have to go to the top. So undo, redo. It's very nice. Undo, redo. All right. There actually is a third way, and it's actually going through multi scale linear transform. And that actually sharpens the detail also. So I'm going to close this one. Since now you know how to do this one, you can use my numbers. Let's undo it. This is a bit of experimenting. One last one. Let, one last try. All right. Let's see, let's open up. Um, let's open up multi scale linear transform. Multi scale linear. There we go. Okay. Make a preview. Of the galaxy. Put it here. Zoom out. All right. Now we're going to do. Open up the preview again. Drop down to luminance because this is not a color image. On layer two, okay, we can um, add, let's just change the number. See, it says details under bias on level two. Let's ch change these numbers here from 0, 0, 5, 0. Okay, that should show up here, perfect. Go to layer th three, which is actually says fourth scale, but layer three. Let's change the numbers here and go about, well, 0, 100. Oops, that's not going to work. 100. And there it is. Now, let's see if that does a little bit of, how what did that do to the image? 4. Oh, so, so, so subtle. Um, I can see it here. Depending on your target, this this may. Um, I don't know if I can use noise reduction along with that. Let's have a look. This makes a huge difference for sharpening. Oh yeah, it does sharpen it. Sharpens it, but doesn't necessarily bring out the lanes. So if you want, use. I'm just going to uncheck, uncheck noise reduction. Though you could leave it on. Run this first to make it a little bit sharper because it's very subtle, and then go ahead and use the one we just used. I'm going to close it now. Then if you want, go back to local histogram and apply it. In this case, I think I'm just going to go see what we have. Un okay, so let's let's apply it because it's been taken off. I'm going to just check, make sure it's not up here. Select your image. Redo local histogram. Yes. There it is. Close, undo, and mask remove. So here's RGB, how we've gotten so far. And again, I find the image is a bit brown. Might've been what I did. Um, I wanted that to be a bit brown, okay, in the middle, but the outer section should be a more, more bluish. And I'm not sure how I got to that. I don't like it. If I was to reprocess this, I'd go through my other steps carefully. But again, it wasn't the processing image. Just wanted to show you how you prepare your images uh, to get them ready to combine both. Now, if I put them both over top of each other and opacity no opacity you can see how luminous just comes out the lanes come out way f way further or if you do it the other way put the color over top or grayscale over top um, you get the same effect okay gonna minimize luminance I'm gonna have one more look at this why my galaxy turned out brown. It could be the fact that I did go ahead and removed the green. Remember this little guy here? I took out 100% of the green, but then there's no green in space. That should not cause any problems. Let's look at the curves for a moment. Oops. Okay. Preview of the galaxy. And let's go to saturation. Um, there's no mask, but this is not being applied. It's just being looked at. So. As you see, the galaxy is really, really brown, and but these outer edges are red, which indicates that's okay. That hydrogen alpha is actually coming out. But if I go to the blue channel and just slightly touch the blue, we'll have this as a galaxy, and that'd be just fine. I'm going to apply it, but then I'm going to take it off. Why? Because I didn't create a mask, and I'm, attack I'm attacking the entire image. But just to show you that the data is there, and that's not too, too bad. Okay, I affect, of course I affected the background, but that's about what you expect to see um, in M81. 
So I'm going to undo this because that's not proper. But the information to prove the point is, was, still is, all hidden in there. So it's up to you as a, as your processor, as you're processing to bring out the way you galaxy, the way you want it to look. Okay, and that, because these two are now ready to be combined as one, concludes part two. And we're going to go to part three. In part three, there'll be four, five ways, five complete different ways to put together LRGB. Without starting it, there are two ways in pixel math. There are two ways in LRGB combination. One is putting luminance on top of RGB, and the other is actually control combining all three channels together. To do that, you would have to have RGB split three ways. But later on in part three, those channels will be open. Why? Because this video was designed for people who have LRGB. In part one, I think we put together RGB. I can't actually remember. I have to look it over again. Short-term memory loss. Um, and But we'll have LRGB. We'll have L. RGB and R, G, and B channels from your filter wheel all separate so we can combine. So looking forward to doing that. Let's close this and that'll do it for part two. Hopefully it helped a lot. There were some mistakes there always is, but the idea is not the workflow, but the general idea is all there of preparing RGB to a point where it's ready to be combined. Prepare your luminance, noise reduction. Uh, you want to do a little bit of, uh, um, a little bit of stretching and you know, a little bit of HDR local contrast, all that to bring it up a little bit because you're going to be doing this again and you don't want to overdo it on these on these two ones, on these two, especially when you're going to attack it even more. We don't want to add a lot of noise. We don't want to oversaturate or blotch our images. Again, I'm going to zoom in here to the background. It's very, very smooth. We didn't overdo it. And if we did, we would have to come back and deal with this. Okay, that's it. Look forward to part three, where we'll no longer be doing pre-combination, but actual LRGB combo, which is what everybody's been waiting for the last week or so. Thank you. See you in part three.